Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn. Hashtag been too long. Okay, yeah, again, <laughs> Bruce Magala. Uh, I don't know what to add to that. Okay. All right, uh, Vern, you wanted to talk about the uh, NCAA. Let's do it, man. Okay. Uh, that's, 68 that's... come in and only one walks away. Well, and tell us what's going on. Why is SMU not in the tournament? That's a good question. I mean, I'm not sure Larry Brown has a lot of answers, but uh, everybody thought SMU, Southern Methodist University, was just a shoe-in because they were beating everybody. I mean, they were like the darlings, and then they lose their last three games, and I guess game within the game, they were like one of the first four outs, so they're not a part of it. They're the top seed in the NIT, which stands for not invited <laughs> <laughs> tournament. <laughs> it's funny too because the NIT used to be a big. It deal. used to be the thing. Yeah, yeah. back in the back in the nineteen uh, seventies, even as recently as the seventies, it was a big deal. Didn't DePaul one time in like the sixties they uh, they uh, they said no to the NCAA to yeah. play That's in the right. NIT? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 It was and, a big deal. that was amazing. And if I remember correctly, what's the only team that's ever won both in the same year? Ooh. The same year. The same year. I didn't realize you could play it both in the same year. It was a long, long time. Ago. Okay. City, well, uh, City College in New York. Oh, yes. no kidding. C C N Y. Yeah. Weren't they involved in some kind of scandal too, way back in the day? I think there was some kind of office scandal. Anything in New York. Point yes. shaving scandal. Did they use the beach baskets back then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and two-handed set shots. Had, had they, had they cut the hole out of the bottom yeah. of the beach baskets? I tell you something. I feel old because whenever I watch these old uh, vintage uh, movies from the fifties and sixties, you see some guys still throwing the two-handed overhead. Yeah. Set, Set shot. shot. Yeah. <laughs> I learned how to do that when I was a kid. I threw it up from the chest. Yeah. And I, was I, very good. I was very good at it, too. Well, if, if you practice Bend the knees yeah. and release. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. There was a, um, an old lady who was one of the first, like, quote, you know, women college basketball players. And they were explaining about how the rules said that the women could only dribble for a third of the court. That's right. They had to pass. Well, also, they had that rule. The women had that rule where you, you had three people on offense and three on defense. And... Your three defensive defensive players, once they passed the ball forward, they couldn't go across the midcourt line. Yeah. They had to get it to the other three. It was a, like two different teams were well, playing. Well, might, you know, it might be uh, too much on their heart to run that that match, right? I guess they didn't <laughs> consult James Naismith. Uh, not not, those not rules exactly. Do you guys see that thirty for thirty on no, on, on no, Naismith? The no. original rules of basketball. No, it. It, it it went to Sotheby's at auction, and it was between wow. a, a high roller from Duke. And uh, a high roller from Kansas. Oh, I did hear about that. And yeah. Naismith yeah. was a former college coach at Kansas. at Kansas. So they felt the rules of basketball should be at Kansas. Should be yeah. at Kansas. Oh, yeah. Wait, I, did, did, I did, did hear about the that. Duke guy outbid out the Kansas guy. No, 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 the Kansas guy. Oh, he made sure. Huh? the Duke guy, but Bruce, it it, it, it went for like yeah, you know, like four point two million. Oh, of course, something. well they have to it's have amazing. This, that's and they like had a, the Bible. And they just, had they you know. had a camera on these two guys <laughs> bidding. I mean, they were really. I mean, they more of know, an ego thing. It'd be like three point seven. They would go uh, to the next guy. The next guy would, would look at his financial person. And, wouldn't it be wonderful to have that kind of money? Yeah. If you had that kind of money, just to throw around, wouldn't that be great? If I had that money, I'd throw mine away. <laughs> yeah. you know? So, um, getting back to this NCAA tournament with regard to you know how this works, who does the inviting? You know, because you know that there's got to be some not only politics in it, but you know it, it, they got to look at the money. Right. Oh yeah. Well, well, they well, well, hey, well, got to have Duke in there because that's going to bring in money. Yeah. Versus... You want to have the big teams that have, they're going to bring the big. There's a bas- fans, yeah. There's a basketball committee, yeah. and and they're in this room, and it takes hours, and it's like, hey, look, we got a field of 68, which includes four teams that play in the play-in game to create the field of 64, and then they know, okay, there's a certain amount of automatic bids, which goes to the conference champion. And then, and then from there, it's, they, they, they look at the RPI ranking, the strength of schedule, and then they look at just the, the, the power of the teams and, and, and the big-time conferences that have the stronger teams with the stronger strength of schedule always are the ones that get in. The ACC, they sent six. Pac-12 got six. Atlantic 10, I believe, got seven. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and it just kind of SEC, six. So it just, just kind of goes on from there. So you've got, you got the Final Four, you've got Elite Eight, you got Sweet 16. Sweet 16. What's 32 called? <laughs> I don't know. You I make it know. to the second round. Yeah. Well, what's great, though, is that, if, you know, theoretically, if you get in there, you have a chance. Of course, you lose one game and you're gone. Yeah. That's the beauty of it, I think. The great teams can falter, 
I remember I was we were talking about this off air and back in 1994. Cal had Jason Kidd, Lamont Murray. They were ranked 12th. They go in as a number one seed and they lose in the first round to Wisconsin, Green Bay. Things like that happen. It's it's uh, it's wonderful drama. Let's go back to even further. How about Steve Nash and Santa Clara, a yeah. 15, mm-hmm. beating a two in Arizona. I remember that. Wow. That's something. Yeah. That was amazing. I yeah. Amazing. yeah. Maybe Arizona was number one. I think they were. No, no, it can't be. No, 15's got to play. Well, they were, yeah, yeah they, were, they were up there. And I mean, they might have been one of the And to the state, 16 has never beaten a one. Really? Yeah. In the men's side. Yeah. yeah. So it's I, happened I, I in guess the women's I, side, but not the men's. Cal wouldn't have been the number one seed, but they were number two. That was just an awful loss. I remember going to that game and covering it in Salt Lake City. What the heck is going on here? But that's the beauty of college basketball. Well, so what, I filled up filled my bracket. I've got Louisville, last year's champion, Playing against Florida, Ooh. with Florida winning. Florida winning. Yeah, that's a very good team, aren't they? Florida, yeah, oh, powerful team. I just never think of Florida. Well, like twenty-five now, in a row. Yeah. Think about it now. Florida is the is the center for basketball. The two-time yeah. defending champion Miami Heat and, and Florida University. And I got to give it up to our listeners. Florida University of Florida. Uh, in the Wichita State area, I'm real. I'm, I'm, I'm real sorry. You got like the toughest bracket draw. You got your number one seed, but boy, the road to get there. Is, uh, I mean, they got Kentucky's in there. I mean, Not this, fair. And then they're yeah. well deserved. Yeah, you know, you know, I mean, they pulled off some great upset wins, too. They were they were really a fun team to watch. I don't care, I don't care what conference you play. You go 34 and 0. Yeah, come you know, on. I mean, come Please. on. Give you know? right. And who's the big upset uh, in your uh, I got the uh, first round upset. I got I got Harvard. 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 Be beating Cincinnati. Ooh. That's what I got. Harvard. Don't tell Oscar Robertson. <laughs> Oscar doing He's still like around. That. Oh, yeah. The big O. I remember, when, I remember when Oscar did the uh, color uh, analysis with Brent Musburger on the NBA championships. And the Warriors were playing in that championship. And I covered the first two games, in, or middle two games in, in, uh, in San Francisco. But I remember Oscar got so excited <laughs> that when Rick Barry would make a shot, he'd go, oh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that, that was his insightful analysis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, as you might imagine, Oscar that. wasn't around the next year. Brett Musburger, of course, has survived a long time. I, I, I love it when I, I love it when the color analyst overstates the obvious. The team's down two, and they got the ball, and the time's running down, and the and the, and the analyst says, "You know, they got to score this time." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they got to score. Uh, score. Uh, really? I was speaking of that, what they, what's this expression? They've got to score the basketball. Yeah, and that's something they and and they enunciate. Can you, and not only can you that, dribble the basketball? Yeah, Mark can you distribute the basketball? <laughs> he can shoot the yeah. basketball. I mean, I love Mark Jackson, the Warrior coach. I go to a lot yeah. of Warrior games, and I hear him say after the game, "We've got to score the basketball more." Yeah, exactly. You've got to score, <laughs> and you got to put the basketball through the net. I guess score the basketball. Well, wasn't uh, Doug Collins? The guy, I, mean, I think it's Doug Collins who said, "Right, uh, I think every time we score more than 100 points, and they score less than 100 points, we have a good shot at winning." <laughs> really? <laughs> Gosh, coach! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I pay you four million a year for that. Yeah. <laughs> speaking, 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 speaking of millions, speaking of millions, how about yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Did, what did he get, by the way? Four the, million a year. Eight Jackson million a year? is he? Getting, he's getting eight million a year, right? He's getting twelve million. Twelve million, million. Add those two together. Ooh, like, yeah. we're, see, we're talking about the New York Knickerbockers. Oh, and working for James Dolan, who's one of the biggest dolts in the history of the <laughs> NBA. But that guy is a complete buffoon. Yeah, but he's got Phil Jackson now. Now, now, yeah, Phil, Phil probably came in and tried. Took, looked at Nolan. Uh, just go in the corner and count your money. Yeah. I'll run the team. Yeah, but you still have to have good players, though. Yeah, you do. Chris Chris Cohen, though, the former Warrior owner, is probably saying to himself, "Darn it, I thought Dolan was going to be worse than me. Now he might not be so bad." Already put out a challenge to Carmelo Anthony, saying, "Hey, boy, Carmelo Anthony, for as great a player as he is, he can play at a higher level." Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Raise the bar, baby. That's right. Hey, here's a good question. Will Mark Jackson of the Warriors end up in New York where he played so many years and where he is from? There were rumors. There, there are rumors to that effect. Uh, I, right? I have Warriors keep him. Yeah. Okay, he's a good guy. All right. Uh, NCAA upsets. NCAA upsets. Here, that's a trivia team. We're going for our first commercial break here. This is an easy one. Kentucky was stunned by which all African American starting oh, yes. in 1966. Yeah. We always have to have one piece yeah. one. National championship. Bonus. What is the school known by now? Mm-hmm. That's okay. a good one. The first three emails with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Email Edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to this question: Kentucky was stunned by which all Amer- African American starting lineup team in the 1966 national championship? They made a movie out of it. Very nice movie. Glory right? Road. That's right. Love that movie. Okay. Um, don't touch that dial. And then the bonus, what is the school known by now? Because the name has actually changed. 
Don't touch that dial. It's 14 Con 101. I'll be right back. And I noticed you tipped now, but they were known right. as uh, Very good. school fines or something like that. No, it was like uh, it was like uh, Texas. It was like like Texas Southern or Texas something like that. that yeah. or something like Dude, that. Do you, you remember? Do you remember who played for Kentucky? Yes. Pat Riley, Pat, Pat Riley. Yeah, Riley. Yeah. Rick Addleton. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I later I saw Pat Riley uh, at a Miami Heat shoot around because they come to USF for the shoot around. And I had, and I had just seen that movie and I talked about it. Adolph Rupp was the coach of Adolph Rupp. Rupp. Yeah. Adolph Rupp. You know what his comment was? He said, "Somebody asked him, what are you going to have a black player on the University of Kentucky?'" He goes, "We'll have a black player with the Harlem Globetrotters of a white, white player." player yeah. What a stupid. But you, you know, uh, there was a movie. Started, but he started. He started recruiting uh, <laughs> African Americans. Well, after that. kind of like uh, what's his face down at Alabama, the football coach, yeah. uh, Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant. Same Bryant thing. Yeah. Took him a while, but well, what, um, well, well, the thing that the story behind that is he. He wanted African American players, but the system. Bear Bryant did. Yeah, yeah. The system wouldn't allow him to yeah, do it, and that's, that's why. Yeah. That's why he scheduled a game against USC. Yeah. That was what six, at Alabama. Was USC six, came yeah. in with Sam Bam Cunningham and beat the shit out of early seventies. <laughs> that was a uh, yeah. Seventy-two. <laughs> It was either early 70s or like 69 or something like that. That's right, because they didn't Because the OJ, OJ had left. Yeah. So Sam Sam like Cunningham was the next big back. God, that's hard to believe that Alabama did not integrate until the early 70s. That's amazing. Jesus. If you, if you get a chance, there it's kind of a B-rated movie called The Pistol. It's about Pete Ramsey. Oh, Mitchell I love to see that. Yeah, yeah. And his dad, uh, Press, Press yeah. Press, you know, he's coaching. And eventually, at the very, very end, they play uh, a team from... You know, uh, like another high school team of all black players, and it's a very close game and all that. Because Press Maravich is kind of going, you know, this is the future. Mm -hmm. It's 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 kind of a cute kid. The kid can play ball. You know, Pete Little Pete. He's not a very good actor, but but he's pretty good. Yeah, they probably got a a high school or a college. That's what they did. His ability to pass was just was just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Do you think about it? Not to get off on a tangent, but the guy who played with. With Pete Maravich, he played in the same teams as Pete Maravich, as uh, Earl Monroe, uh, Bill Russell, Rick Barry, Dr. J, and Elvin Hayes. You'll never guess who it was. Jim Barnett played with played with six different teams, and he played yeah. with all wow. those guys. I mean, he was decent. Yeah, decent player. Yeah, he's like a good sixth man. For a he was the number one pick of the yeah. Boston Celtics. Yeah. He yeah, got there. Yeah, they yeah. won nine championships in a row. They didn't win. Then he gets traded and they win two more. Yeah. <laughs> they just, yeah, he thought, yeah, he thought, hey, well, I'll just be yeah. I'll get an old championship he was, ring. He was the Warriors the next year they win the championship. So he always teased, he always used to. Can you believe that? He's with yeah. the Celtics. His rookie year gets traded and the Celtics win the next yeah. year. Yeah. That, that's got to be really frustrating. What he said, he, he said that, because uh, Russell, Bill Russell was the player coach. Mm-hmm. And so uh, his, uh, his pregame speech was something to the effect of, uh, all right, wait, who'd who'd play play tonight? Tonight? Oh, not those guys. Yeah, well, so who is it? Well, let's go out there and kick ass. Just kick ass. That was that, that, yeah, that was it. <laughs> and then and then, then he called timeout and he'd come over because he'd go to Sam Jones because Sam, you're not running. And he goes, mm-hmm. Bill, I, I I I'm running. He goes, No, I know when you're running, you're not running. Uh, <laughs> what, Barnett, what, go what, in for what, Sam. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 <laughs> Forty five points, <laughs> three minutes to go. Uh, <laughs> still not running. <laughs> hey, real quickly, here, what Barnett told me this great story. He when he played with the Rockets. Elvin Hayes was this young player, great young player, but he was he was undisciplined, mm-hmm. and he hated the, the coach named Jack McMahon. And uh, Jack McMahon, during the game, kept feeding Elvin the ball, and Elvin kept dropping it, and letting it go out of bounds. He called a timeout. He goes, Elvin, what's going on? You're not catching the ball. He goes, I, I, I'm catching the ball. He goes, no, you're not. I'm taking you out of the game. Fuck you. You're going to be gone by next week anyway. <laughs> and he was. And he was. And he was. And, he was. And, he was. and Jim Barnett didn't like Elvin Hayes, and he said something to him once. He goes, Elvin chased me through an airport lobby. He says, but I was too fast for him to catch. <laughs> Jim he, Barnett was too fast? And then he said, he was, he was the biggest asshole, and he wasted his talent. And they go, but he became a great player because he fin- what finally happened to him was that El- Alex Hannon came in to coach. And Alex was a big guy, and he, would, he was doing the same nonsense in practice. So Alex Hannon told everybody else to leave. And when he came back, he said Elvin, who had been like a lollygag, was shooting, you know, layups and running around. And he, right. Elvin told him later when they became friends, because they did. He goes, Elvin, uh, Alex Hand grabbed me by the shirt, pushed me up against the wall. And he goes, "You're gonna fucking play like the rest of these guys, or I'm gonna kick your ass." And Elvin was like, just a kid, oh, like, shit. whoa. Man. <laughs> well, if your coach is big enough, yeah. we're talking John Thompson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alex, Do you imagine was, trying to challenge John? I don't no, think so. No, no. John Thompson was. Ugh. 
Man, did I. He was intimidating. Alright. Boy, your paranoia. Boy, your paranoia. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn. Seal here, seal there, and right up the middle. <laughs> Where's that come from? Vince Lombardi. Oh, there oh you yeah, go. yeah, there you go. That's the power sweep. Power yeah, sweep, yeah. Okay. and Bruce McGowan. Everybody's holding, 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 holding. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lombardi again. Again? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a Vince Lombardi uh, uh, trivia theme here. Okay, but uh, now, right now we're talking NCAA upsets. Uh, Kentucky was stunned by which all African American starting lineup in the team in the 1966 national championship. And you got the bonus. What's the bonus? What, what's they called now? What are they called now? Well, they're called UTEP. UTEP. But I don't know what they're called back in the day. Texas Do you remember what they were right? called back in the day? I believe it was Texas Western. Yes. Texas Western. Very there you good. go. Texas and Casey Casey was down the year. It was 1965. 65. <laughs> you know what's interesting about that, too, was, 66. was, oh, was 66. that uh, okay. Pat Riley and Rick Allen, two future NBA coaches, played for Kentucky. And Adolph Rupp, who had coached for many, many years there, was asked, why don't you have a, a black player in your team? He goes, we'll have a black player in our team when the, when the Harlem Globetrotters bring in a white player. Which was the stupidest thing anybody could ever say. But it just showed you what an idiot he was. He was a great coach, though. But, I mean, just in terms of human relations. Guy, I mean, he probably well, changed, changed over time. He probably Oh, no. You get me? Well... I, you know, they say George know. Wallace actually changed. Yeah, I don't think. Sure. Yeah, uh, privately? No. Privately, Publicly? No. Publicly, yes. Okay. okay. Well, maybe okay. maybe okay. after he got okay. shot, he changed. Who knows? Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. Kind of uh, and it. one last thing about that, uh, because we're still kind of on the basketball theme here. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Lou Alcindor. Lou Alcindor looking to go back to the Milwaukee Bucks. I hope, really? I hope as a, as a center, but I don't think so. <laughs> he's looking to uh, be a coach. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, he's been, he's been trying that for years. He's about 70 years old, though, isn't he, Bert? Yeah, came yeah. up in '69. We so had him. We had him in studio a few months ago. Yeah. He, he he looks fantastic. Yeah, well, he's a yoga practitioner. He's yeah. really into yoga. And he's I, an interesting guy. When he when he played, if you walked up to him after a game, and interviewed him, uh, he wouldn't get much of an interview. He w he wouldn't dismiss you, but he'd give you this kind of glassy eyed look and give you these really monotone, short answers. And writers used to just hate talking to him because <laughs> he would give them nothing. But if you got him away from the arena, apparently he was just a fascinating guy. I had, uh, years ago, I had a client who was um, some kind of an NBA coach, you know, assistant coach or something, training and stuff. And we talked about this. I talked about the various training things. And he said that one of the reasons that Jabbar either never or hardly ever got hurt. Never got hurt. He never lift weights. Yeah. He, he was, in, he was run, into, uh, he was big he, he into, yoga. Into, into yoga and, and yeah. running and jumping. He heavy, heavy jump rope. Yeah, like a boxer. Yeah. 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 And was one. He was. He was one. He was in one of the great fight scenes with Bruce Lee. Oh yeah. In the movie Face, <laughs> Faces of Death. Yeah. Faces of Death. Yeah. yeah. And he was telling me they they shot it in like Shanghai or something like that, and it was really it was, it was really noisy wow. outside, so they, they closed all the windows. It was hot as hell. Oh, well, what's he like to scene? interview recently? Now, you talked to him more recently. Has he changed? I've all? interviewed him twice. Once yeah. on radio, not so good. Yeah. But the, and th this was, I don't know, was almost 20 years ago. Uh -huh. on radio. But uh, but this time he was in. He was he was Television selling stuff. something. Yeah. Well, we had him on the TV side, and he was quite, he was quite engaged. That's, that's the one yeah. that the, we have the picture on uh, sports. TV yes, that's right. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's the thing about older guys. Once they get away from the game for a while, they they forget that the media is not there to hurt them. That it's actually there to help them. Yeah. And the smart guys, you know, you'll remember uh, Gary Carter just as an example. That guy was an interviewer's dream. He'd come to you, he'd get to know you, your first name. He was like Vernon. He was friendly. Yeah. You know, Vernon is the, the friendliest guy we've ever known in the media. I, I can say that with with pure honesty because I've known Vernon a long time. Vernon doesn't, doesn't uh, you know, big time anybody. And I think that Gary Carter was beloved for that reason yeah. as well. Yeah, I just softened him up. And then I can ask them. Yeah, yeah, you sneak in there. <laughs> that's, hey, that's you smart. sneak in. Well, it says here, okay, although he spent most of his glory days with the Lakers, he was drafted by the Milwaukee the Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks, Bucks. And he right. spent five seasons there. And won a championship there. That's, that's right. It says yeah. here, and here's a note, the Bucks title in their, it was their third year of expansion yeah. made them the fastest team uh, to, to earn a title yeah. in any major sports. Amazing. And even Amazing. before even before that, I mean, this guy was a oh. high school phenom oh, yeah. from Power Memorial High school in New York LA. City, yeah. and then a uh, uh, just you know Rucker Park legend. I mean, it just uh, I mean yeah. the stories about him just go on and on. He just was a, you know it, the guy really. I mean UCLA had some great players, but you think of all the great players that came through UCLA. This guy was the best. He was in an episode. Speaking of UCLA, he was in an episode 
of Mannix. I know I'm dating oh, myself. Yeah. Remember with Mike, with yeah, Mike, Mike Connors. Connors. Well, yeah. Mike Connors, yeah. And, and Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Yeah. Yes. And Joe, right. the Joe Mannix character was a former basketball player at the UCLA. And oh, really? And there's a scene where, you know, Joe Mannix, he's, in, he's investigating that. a murder or something. Like that. Anyway, he, for some reason, he's a Pauly Pavilion. Yeah. And shooting baskets is Lou Alcindor. <laughs> and, and a little, little speaking part. It was great. That okay, so great. do you remember uh, Lee Majors and the Six Million Dollar Man? Of course. Sure. There was an episode with Larry Zonka. Really? Yeah. yeah. Larry Zonka. Zonka. I believe, uh, uh, I think there were several NFLers. That, weren't, they, weren't they after him? They were cha- They were like, yeah, uh, exactly. they were like inmates, some prisoners, yeah. like that. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, I love it. Larry Zonka's an inmate in prison. He was a guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. One, one last thing on basketball still. Uh, Mark Cuban came up with this idea about let the fourth worst team get the first round draft check. Yeah. That way teams don't try to tank at the end of the season. Mm, that's so, right. That's, 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 that's a good thought. Idea. Yeah, not a yeah, bad idea. I mean, cause, yeah, how many teams do that? Well, and there's no guarantee even if you get the top pick that you're going to get the right guy. I mean, like, well, yeah, ask the Philadelphia 76ers yeah. at the yeah. time we're doing the show. What is it, 21 in a row? Something like that? Boy. Yeah. It wasn't, um, or with, with the NBA, don't they do like lottery with like that's true. Balls. Yeah, you get, you, just it, get a better you, you, you get a better chance. Yeah, it's weighted so that so yeah. that the the team with the worst record would have the best chance. And the first year that happened, the Warriors had the worst record in the league, and they didn't get the most balls. And they but they ended up getting Chris Mullen, which was not a bad deal. I remember Al Adams was so flabbergasted about that. And then they got Chris Mullen. It's like, oh well, it's not so bad after all. From St. John. Yeah. That's right. the reason I know that is because I watched that thirty for thirty episode on uh, ESPN about the, the Big East. Oh, there you go. Very interesting. Uh, okay, Michael Vick. Uh, lack of interest during free agency is his NFL career over? No, yeah, somebody will pick him up. He's in his mid thirties, and and for some reason people are enamored with Michael Vick. And I think uh, I, I, there was talk of that that he could be a Viking. There's talk that maybe yeah. he would even come to Oakland and be with the Raiders because I, yeah, I, I Raiders think people right. are in love with the thought that hey, this could be like the Michael Vick. Of old, who could just take off running and use his legs and whatever. Maybe but he's dogging it. What you love to do? Oh, that's all. Oh, Edward Bat. Edward Bat. Strike that. Wouldn't you like to see him at Oakland? No, he, he, yeah, he, he kind he, of. A, he'd be an Oakland I mean, guy. because Oakland is not supposed to do anything, and they're always they've had this horrible reputation of late. It'd be the perfect place for him to come. You know, nobody expects anything. I just think it's interesting in the case of the Raiders. They get all this cap money, more money than anybody. And and there was always talk about well we're going to tear down and rebuild and and build for the future. They're signing a bunch of guys that you could say or have their best years behind them. Yeah, they've got a lot of veterans. You know, it kind of reminds me of what they did in the late '90s, and they built up a pretty good team. But they had Rich Gannon, who was just hitting his prime years, who had never gotten a chance to play, and they had a great offensive line. And they brought in guys like Romanowski and, and Rod Woodson and Jerry Rice, and they got a lot out of them. But this team doesn't have that kind of foundation. I just, uh, who's I think, I, I, I think, <laughs> as 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 badly as they want to tear down and rebuild with draft picks that are ready to play now, I think they're. I, I think realistically, in the back room where nobody's looking, I think they're saying, "Hey, look, man, we gotta, we got we gotta do what we can to just start winning." <laughs> now we we have to create an environment where people want to be Oakland a part Raiders, of this, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and 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 maybe only then. Can we start to really build for the draft well, and bring in guys and develop? Who's that offensive lineman who was just a beast, but I think he got hurt? Jared Valdir, who was yeah. who got away went to Arizona. That and now he's with the Arizona Cardinals. That's a terrible loss for the Raiders. And then they get Roger Saffold lined up, and they're ready to sign him, and he has a bad shoulder. But he re-signs with St. Louis, which leads you to believe the Raiders are so afraid of being burned by a, by a free agent who's hurt. Well, that, that was Mark Davis's call. Yeah, I think there was any, any threat of some kind of a you know, labrum. Yeah. Yeah. Injury and he just he just backed off, but yeah. that's just too bad because they they had flown in his parents. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're all ready to kind of you know, and this this is left tackle. This is the this is the glamour spot on the offensive yeah. line. What's sad about the Raiders is there's a culture of losing there that's existed seemingly forever because it's only been since 2002, which is well 12 years ago. That is forever in this day and age. <laughs> I mean, you think about it; they have not had a winning team, a team that's been in the playoffs since 2002. When well, they which in. which brings to mind. How do the Patriots do it? Yeah, they've been at the top, Spygate, year in <laughs> and year out, Spygate, whatever you want to yeah. call it. But I mean, when you're at the top, you're supposed to pick from the bottom of yeah. the draft. But but they're they're still well, there. Yeah, but for Brady, he's been around for how long? Yeah, 
But they have, they have, they have, they have a, yeah, but, but Brady can't tackle. Yeah, they, they Brady, Brady can't, he can't catch. Is, I think a lot of it is just the, cult, the culture of winning that the 49ers had in the 80s. You come into that organization, and you just believe it can happen. You know, conversely, you go to Oakland, where the team is looking over and show, how are we going to lose today? You know, they're going to find a way to lose. They are going to find a way to lose, and they've got to get rid of that. How do you do well, that? Well, one of the things that you, you know, mentioned about, you know, guys getting hurt, that, that was one of my things here. Okay, 30-year-old 30, 30 Brent Grimes, cornerback. It's a 30-year-old form. Okay, I, I, guess I can see that. Uh, for the Dolphins, signed a four-year, $32 million mm. deal after recovering from a torn Achilles in 2012. Wow. That's hard to believe. Yeah, but, 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 how, but how much but, of that money but, but, is guaranteed? Yeah, but what, you, 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 you got to take a look at that yeah. contract. Yeah, yeah, four years, 32 million. Oh, no. You don't know what it, Yeah, but you don't know what his base is. Yeah, he might you get you one don't know if it's incentive laden. That's, you the, don't that's know. the NFL, too, for you, isn't it, Vern? I mean, there's so many, so many guys, oh, I signed this huge contract. Well, by the way, you know, one, one year's guarantee. And I, I, did, I didn't know this. I thought I thought when you sign a contract and then let's just say $7 is guaranteed, I thought you walked into the bank with a check for, let's just say, four and a half million by the time the government gets its cut. But no, it's spread out yeah. over the lifetime of the contract. Yeah, that's right. Ew. Okay, hey, guys, we're going to head to our second commercial break here. Again, the theme is NCAA upset. In the 1985 National Championship, Georgetown was denied a title again when which familiar foe made that made all but one second half shot shooting 78% from the field for the game and route to a 66-64 upset. Mm. First three emails with the correct answer. You need, you, need, you need to know the name of the team? Correct. Okay. Uh, three, you get a win a free three-day email. Excuse me, three-day mm. two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Email edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to this question. Georgetown, in, uh, in 1985, the national championship, Georgetown was denied a title again when which familiar foe that made all but one second half shot, shooting 78% from the field, that's phenomenal, and route to a 66-64 upset. Don't touch that dial. Sports Econ 101 will be right back. That's NC State, isn't it? No, Villanova. Oh, that's right, Villanova. NC State, who did they beat? They, they beat NC State beat Houston, Houston in 1983. Right. A long ago? That was Jim Valvano's big moment. And then he died. Well, remember, remember, remember Georgetown was snake bit because they had yeah. lost earlier yeah. to North Carolina. That's right. Was then Michael they, Jordan there then? Michael Jordan. Yeah. yeah. And then they and then they're in the championship game again, and they're heavily favored to beat Villanova, who played slow down and yeah. good defense. Who was on that Villanova team anyway? Remember? Howard Porter was he on that team? Harold Harold Presley, I believe, Harold is, Presley. The, is, is the one name that comes to mind. It's always the guys, you know, it's not always, but a lot of times the guys who excel in the postseason never make it in the pros either. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And then, then you do get a guy who's, you know, That's fantastic in the postseason and just has an amazing career. But, uh, yeah, the Warriors should kill Orlando for that. Orlando is just awful. They've lost, what is it, 19 out of 20 or but something? These, but these are the Warriors, so you yeah. know, at least for a while, they're going to play down to the level of their opponent. Yeah, the other night against Clinton. The light bulb will go off and yeah. then they'll... Yeah, no. I think I think not having uh, my, uh, Clay Thompson the other night hurt him a little bit, but that's still no excuse. You gotta, you know, Clay yeah, Thompson. Yeah, I tell you, that guy if he played in Chicago or New York or LA, he'd be talking about raving. He about was him. nice enough. Yeah. To, he was nice enough to record the open to this 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 really nice CYO piece that I put together. Oh, nice. He's next, a good kid. Next break, I'll, I'll show <laughs> it. To and you. I say, he seems like a very nice. Guy. I, I got to know his dad a little bit when I was working in Portland because his dad played up there. And he was a young player. <laughs> nice guy. Very good family. Yeah, yeah, he seems like a nice player. Yeah, and, and staff, staff too, they're both, yeah. both from pro NBA, you know, family. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here next to Vern Glenn. Ah! Bruce McGowan. Yes, sir. And here's our second commercial trivia question. Uh, NCAA upset in the 1985 National Championship. Georgetown was denied a title again when they, which familiar foe that made all but one second half shot. That's amazing. Uh, shooting 78% from the field for the game and route to a 66-64 upset. 78% in the game? Yep. Jeez. That, that's but they only won by two points? Yep. <laughs> well, what, what did the Georgetown end up shooting? Uh, I, Must have shot less probably. Than, less than 78%. Was it, was it 78% for the game or for the half, for the second half? No, for, uh, for, for the, the game. game. For the game. Jeez. Uh, that's amazing. Who was the team? Uh, one of the big five schools out of Philadelphia, Villanova. Villanova, that yeah. is correct. It, it, uh, you know, next uh, 
the next question is going to be hard. Okay. I think it can get tease you a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, and you know, we were talking about injuries and stuff. What about a 38-year-old Panic Peyton Manning completing his physical? Is he worth 20 million dollars now? Well, he got his team to a Super Bowl. I guess it's worth it for the. Got his team to a Super Bowl. Yeah. You, you could argue that he is the, from a player standpoint, he's the face of the National yeah. Football League. He's got a high Q rating. Everybody wants his name tied to their product. Yeah. By the way, Peyton, if you're listening out there, you like to advertise on Sports Econ 101? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and call in. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. He's a high character guy. He he's is, some, man. He's, he's a good. He's a good guy. He's I, 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 had like the pleasure, I had the pleasure of meeting him in Pebble Beach. Oh. For the recent uh, Pebble Beach Pro Am, yeah. could not probably probably the nicest like manner of being blown off yeah. I've ever experienced. He put his hand on your shoulder and said, looked in the eye and said, Vernon, I'm sorry." Well, he he he, he had just gotten there, and uh, and again, this is this is a week removed from losing the Super Bowl, oh, yeah, which was heartbreaking. And he's on the putting green and he's putting or whatever. You know, I'm just I'm I'm one of few cameras there early in the morning. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and there he is, and, uh, and I'm there with my little camera gear just by myself, and he comes walking by, and I go, I go, uh, yeah, hey, Peyton, you, you, you know, you got, uh, you got a couple of questions, you know, and yeah, I mean, I know you're doing your thing, and he's like, and he's like, well, I'm about talked out right now, if you don't <laughs> mind, and he walks off, that was yeah. it. I think I think he I had to respect that. I think he was still, ch- you know, just chafing from that loss. I mean, just what a humiliating show that was. Yeah. I mean, all the great things he's done in his career, it goes out like, nah, it wasn't entirely his fault, but he was he was complicit in that loss. No oh, yeah, question. No, no. Yeah. from from the, as soon as the safety, they you know, pressed. You knew it. Yeah. They yeah. pressured. They hit yeah. him. They, I mean, they they, oh. they did everything they could to to turn Trent around, and they did. And it's got it's got to drive him up the wall, even though he'll never admit it. That his brother, who is far less, I mean, I yeah. like his brother, but his they brother's not in the same it. class, yeah. has won two he championships. Yeah, and he has at least won one. He has won one. That's true, but still. And he, he, you could argue <laughs> the Giants as a team collectively, at least from a defensive standpoint, won those Super Bowls. Oh, yeah. 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 Except for Ty Reed, they uh, helmet against the helmet of Green Bay. Uh, the lethargic Lakers. How bad are things? This oh. be, this, I mean, this How bad are they? <laughs> <laughs> they're saying they're, 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 they're saying they're saying this is the worst Laker team yeah. in franchise history. And Kobe wants to come back next year and thinks that the team can actually be competitive. Come on. Well, he has to. He has to. Have you that seen one. what they're giving him every two weeks? No, I mean, he true. has to say that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? It says how bad are things for the cellar dwellers? Again, I'm reading from ESPN. Mag- or, no, I'm sorry, from Sports Illustrated here. Says Pau Gasol uh, called them out for lacking discipline, and Kobe Bryant reportedly unfollowed all of his teammates on Twitter. He did. <laughs> That's funny. So well, they're they're lucky that the Clippers are doing so well because LA's got at least something to, to, to pay attention to now. You know, no football team. So. Yeah. Um, you know, you wonder a situation like that. I mean, morale obviously is down. I, what what does one do to change that? Bring in a lot of new people, I guess. Bring, yeah. Bringing guys who who, yeah. who are hungry that uh, that they really want to help. Turn it around, but I mean, but you 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 see you see the effect of of, of, the, of the loss in a in a high caliber player, Kobe Bryant. You take him out of the mix, it just it just just sucks the life right out of him. Yeah. So I, it just yeah, because he does more than just you know score points. I mean, he does sort of create a pulse or create an attitude. And I think in the more in any other sport, basketball, you get that one guy. He can kind of create that atmosphere almost single handedly. Yeah, you look at all the great teams. Yeah. They got the one guy that can kind of put a team on yeah. on on their back. And carry them for yeah. a little bit. The Lakers, they got nobody. No, no. nobody. Yeah, yeah, you know, baseball. It's a little harder to do. That. It's harder, and it's impossible. Baseball, baseball you, you you need everybody. Yeah. You know. But I mean, look, you, the best <laughs> players only get to bat four times a game, and the best pitchers only get to pitch once a week. So you know. Yeah. Uh, moving on here, a little, little different sport. Uh, Lance Armstrong says here. Is he uh, back in the news? Who? Uh, Is he yeah. back in the news? Oh, yeah, if he's in the news, he's in trouble. Is he on the bike he's again? Probably not good. Probably well, not good. The attorneys for Lance Armstrong argued Friday that he shouldn't have to return to arbitration over million-dollar bonuses he received for winning races, even if it was re- revealed later, uh, years later, that the cyclists lied about taking performance-enhancing drugs. Well, he, should he should keep the money. He should keep the money. He should keep the money. Yeah, years later, come on, you know. Oh, it's interesting. It says How can they prove? I mean, I, you know, theoretically, there's no no proof that he did. He put that. cycling on the map. Yeah. He made it yeah. mainstream. He did. He did all that work. I mean, yeah, let him keep the money. Yeah. What the heck? Okay. And I'm, he's going to have to live with his own conscience. That's that's what it is. 
If you, if, if, you, if you romance a woman and give her the engagement ring. Yeah, you got to let her have it. you got to let her keep the Come ring. On. Just give her something. Come on. Okay. Yeah. If you guys say he gets to keep the money, he gets to yeah, keep the money. Yeah, that's, the, that's the rule of thumb here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on here to uh, okay, it's spring training. Uh, it says, <laughs> it's funny, John Henry, um, Red Sox owner, responding on Twitter to the Marlins demand that Boston apologize for yeah. sending a lineup full of prospects to a great group. I love this. League. I know what yeah. you're going to say here. And what did he say? What did he say? He, he said, said they should apologize for the regular yeah. season lineup. <laughs> they should. That's an embarrassment. Oh. Jeffrey Lawyer is a terrible owner. I mean, he bought he bought himself a championship years ago, and ever since and then had a fire sale. Yeah. Won it, and then yeah, yeah. He did the same thing that Heisinger did in 19 was it 97? He had a fire sale, and Lawyer went in 2003. Then he has a fire. How can they have any kind of fan loyalty when they keep selling off all their good players? Yeah, but what was the deal here? Where he sending up a uh, lineup full of prospects. So it sounded like, as I understand it, instead of sending the regulars out to play the game, he just had a bunch of the prospects. Well, it was a, it yeah, was a split, what, but it was split squad. It's a split squad, though. It was I mean, a split, squad. split squad. So there were half the guys, you know. All right, it's Grant. Players. It's, it's yeah, spring training. Exactly. Let them do what they want to exactly. do for training. Well, you know, well, you're thinking, you're, again, this is coming from Jeffrey Laurier, who's just an idiot. He's like James Dolan and the Knicks. I met Jeffrey Lerner once. I'm not, I'm not impressed. Chris Cohen. Never met him. We should talk about idiot owners sometime. I would love to do that. Because to be an idiot well, owner, you really have to be bad. <laughs> and they're rich and bad. Yeah, rich and bad. Actually, the, the guys from the uh, uh, Warriors are pretty good. Though. They're you know, very good. After, after, hey, look, they couldn't be anything but good after after Chris Cohen. What a disaster. Well, he here, here's the deal. you got you got two guys who understand you know, what the product is, and they understand what entertainment is, yeah, yeah. and they understand what they need to do to be some kind of a draw. Yeah. But one guy seems to be kind of quiet. Well, he's more of a, he is more kind of the money guy, and Lincoln's more of the, it's not that Lincoln doesn't Joe, have money, but Joe's more of the, the front man. Yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe pretty much. Joe Lincoln. Yeah, he, just, he pretty much runs the team. He's there every night. I mean, the other guy, when he's got a break in Hollywood, he'll fly up and, 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 and take in some of the games. The other guy, the other guy knows entertainment. He knows you know, he, he's the one that he's the one that's that's got, you know, this club and that club and all the kind of that, that that's kind of redone Oracle Arena, and and let and I'll be brutally honest with you, I mean, I, I love Oakland, but they bought that team to move to San Francisco. Oh, no question, no. But you know, I mean, again, it's such a breath of fresh air after Chris Cohen, who just was clueless. Sixteen years he had that team. They went to one playoff series, actually two. They won one series. It's the we believe. I mean, that guy was an idiot. The coaches would come and go, players would come and go. I mean, he built a nice facility, and they you, might, you, you might want to call him an idiot, Bruce, but for what he bought the team and then sold. Oh, the I team, know. He made a lot of money. No, no idiot. No, he's not an idiot in terms of making money, but in terms of putting. Well, that's what these guys know how yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, was that, that, that's how they get, that's how they get in the exclusive owners club. And you know what's amazing? Yeah. The Warriors actually drew good crowds during some of those yeah. awful years. That's a testament to his PR and to yeah, his that, uh, promotional that's people. That's part of the money, though. It, you know, because it's only fits what eighteen, twenty thousand. Yeah, they were, getting, they were getting like fifteen thousand though with a team that won twenty games. I mean, that's amazing to me. And and Lake of the, um, the other owner is uh, Peter Goober. Peter Goober, yeah. yeah. Uh, real estate, right? No, no, he's, no, no, he's, oh, no, no, no. He's, he's Hollywood. He's, he's Hollywood. Yeah. He's uh, he's he's yeah. Mandalay Entertainment. I mean, he's he's come out with all these blockbuster movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that'll make you some stretch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. yeah. Google Peter Goober, and you'll be like, oh my, oh, he did that? Yeah. Well, he did where, that. where was Lake of that one? His... Well, Lake of owned, what was it, the, the Celtics? He was a part owner of the Celtics. He was part owner of the yeah. Celtics. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, How and did then... he make his other money, though? I'm trying to remember. Was it real estate? He's, he's well, a sharp we guy. We almost made a loan when we did our hard money loans. We almost made a loan to someone who was, uh, who was going to put up the Sacramento Kings, but they wouldn't. The Maloof Brothers? Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. But it, it was, before them, it was, uh, this is years ago. Oh. It was uh, uh, like someone who had a uh, ownership interest, and he wanted in the to buy, yeah, and he, oh, okay. he wanted to put up his share of it, and the the, the rest of the team said, no, 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 you can't, you know, the owners, you can't do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly it's like if we would have had to foreclose, suddenly guess what? Hey, Edward Brown is now part of the owner. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to run the show around here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Moving on here. Um, Jose Fernandez, Marlins pitcher. That guy throws 103 miles per hour. Yeah, yeah. Rollis Chapman's got some company, huh? Yeah. Wow. I wonder if you guys that can do that. Rob Dibble was a guy I remember who used to do that. 
And he was kind of, he was crazy. That guy was nuts. Dude, that'd be a little scary being in the box. You know, someone's a little crazy. And he, and he looked a little um, wild, too. A little wild, remember. yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, I, I just always remember him against Barry Bonds. And Bonds, you know, having this great duel with him one time and just finally hitting a home run off of it. It just was spectacular. It was one of those moments, you know. Yeah, what did they call uh, the uh, Nasty Boys? The Nasty Boys. The Nasty Norm, Boys. Norm Charlton and uh, Meyer, Eddie Myers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the left-hander. That's right. Okay, um, the only, what do you think about, do the refs give pre preferential treatment to certain basketball coaches? I think they do for home teams a lot. I'm not sure about coaches, but coaches that are good at knowing how to work with the refs, you, pro you know, there's probably, wouldn't you think there's probably a little... Refs influence? on coaches? Yeah. yeah. You know, but guys like, say, Phil Jackson was still league. I bet you he would get more calls going his way than off, oftentimes than not. Yeah, he's going to get more calls, more leeway than the, 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 Some new, rookie coach. the new coach yeah. himself. Yeah. But interestingly enough, uh, right as I was writing this, uh, Coach K got a, uh, you know, for college. Did you see, did you see, did you see the clip? Did you see the clip? Uh, no, but I, saw, I just read about the... There was a timeout. Thing. Okay, he was upset. And he had a pen in his hand, and uh, and and his back his back was to his he, he was facing his team on the bench, okay. and he threw a pen uh, on the floor, yeah. and it skidded and popped up and uh, and hit one of his well, assistant his coaches. coaches yeah. But I mean, but you know, it, he, was, he was upset. Yeah. Well, a, a ref behind him, maybe uh, thirty feet behind him, saw it, teed him up. And he went, and Coach K went where, nuts. Where, where did the pen, did the pen land up on the floor? I mean, on the, on the basketball so it, was, it, it would be, it would be, it would be if, if, it would be if the, 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 the ref was over there, you're the, you're the assistant coach, the bench is there, and I, and, and I tossed it on the floor and it kind of. And, and, but did it go on the, on the actual, actual floor itself? He, he threw it. You, know, you know what I mean? He, he threw it down. Yeah. Play? He threw the pen down toward the bench on the floor in yeah. disgust. Yeah. And it, and it ricocheted and then like, you know, off the leg of like yeah. an assistant. I guess coach. the refs probably felt like, Mike, this is Mike Krzyzewski. He's got to set a better example, you know, people are watching. Maybe that's what the, the yeah, message he, was. And, and, it, and it was a key moment yeah. In, yeah. In, in, in the ACC oh, yeah. tournament final against Virginia. How about what Jim Boeheim did with, with Syracuse? That was great. That was great. Even he... Cost him the game. Yeah. And this is a guy that's been around for... He okay, runs you know, on these screens. Let's, let's get... When we come yeah. back from the last commercial break, we'll get into okay. that. Okay. All right. Here's our third and final trivia question. Which Mid-American Conference member eliminated Duke in the 1996 tournament behind diminutive point guard Earl Boykins? Oh, the former warrior. Yes. Boy, he is the former warrior. Five foot three, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's, 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 he's an amazing he's, player. He's well, was. I'm not sure okay, the, uh, I don't think so. But the first three emails with the correct answer are free. Get a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Email edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to this question. Which Mid-American Conference member eliminated Duke in the 1996 tournament behind diminutive, diminutive point guard Earl Boykin? Don't touch that dial, Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Well, then you got to think of the schools of the Mid American yeah, Conference. The Mid American Conference. And, 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 and was, is that school today in, in the Mid American Conference? I think so. I can't. Well, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be I'm going to take a pass on this one. I, I, can't, I have no idea. Unless you name some. Well, you don't names. like you don't go for college basketball anyway. Well, yeah, I used to, but I, oh, really? I can't think of. Who are, who's in the Mid American Conference, Bert? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. I can't, I can't name, name University, University of Cincinnati. I, I can't name not. ones. I can't I name one school in America. I think University of Cincinnati is. I think they're in. The reason I had this question is because they're all poor kids. I need to know. Oh, yeah. I, just, I remember him <laughs> in college. I don't remember him. So he was on a national championship team? No, no, no. Oh, no, they knocked him out. That's just, right. They they do, do I do tournament. remember Kentucky losing early, but I just don't remember who beat him. No, it was, it was Duke. Duke. I mean, Duke. I'm sorry. Yeah, Duke. Losing early. Okay, so we only have uh, you know a minute and a half on this one, so you want to talk okay. about Syracuse? Sure. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, so I'll have to get some owners on the show. Did, 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 on did you confirm? Is the school still in the Ameri Mid American Conference? I'll do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was 1996. Uh, 1996. A lot, a lot of schools change. Uh, that's true. A lot of schools change conferences. It happens every back, year. It was back then. I was a newlywed in 1996. Oh, practically. 1996, that was my sixth year at Cron. Oh my god. Yeah, I got married in 89. 96, that was a good year. Just yeah. before Sarah was born. Okay. Did you get married pre or post Loma Brea? In fact, three days 
before. Three days before. Three days before. Three days before. Wow. People, people thought I was the cause. Uh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> in fact, you know what's wild? We were in Hawaii. What yeah. happened? Yeah. yeah. Well, we were in, yeah. But that morning, I remember waking up to a, a huge, like, this is a Earthquake. You were probably yeah. thinking, man, he's good. But I, didn't <laughs> know exactly. I didn't know he was that good. Shit. <laughs> Listen, I told her, I go, I go, I go, I gave the best porridge of his referral. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> I remember when it, when it happened, because I was covering that thing, uh, the crowd went crazy and started cheering. Really? Yeah, because nobody yeah, thought it was that big a deal. And then about 20 minutes later, everybody starts milling around, and there's this big column of smoke out beyond the left field wall. Oh, there's a fire in the marina. Oh, the, the you know. Uh, collapse of the freeway, and uh, there's, you know. Well, we were, we, were, we were watching, you know, I was watching the game, uh, you know, theoretically the game, and Al Michaels comes on, and then he says, oh, there's an earthquake, blah, blah, blah. They actually got knocked off the air. Goes, right? Yeah, and then it comes back on. on. Um, I mean, I was getting calls from New York saying, oh, my God. Because my aunt, oh, my God, I heard Golden Gate Bridge fell into the water. Oh, I know. I'm curious. Now, did you get Ted Koppel almost right away? Once you got a picture back? Oh, it's been a while. Um, I think so. I was in, yeah, I, I saw the same, I was in Baltimore, uh-huh. same thing, in my apartment, watching, watching the whole thing, and then all of a sudden, yeah, I think we're having an earthquake. And then, and then, and then it was, uh, yeah, yeah, folks, we either had an earthquake, or you just saw, like, the greatest open to, to a World Series, and then, and then, and then it goes from right that to, to Ted might, Koppel in Washington. Know, and that's what we got for the rest. I can't remember. You might have stayed with Al Michaels. No. Just kind of we got, we got the Ted Koppel, right. and then, then they finally, then he, he vamped for a little bit, and then they finally got the blimp pictures up. Oh, because they had the Goodyear blimp. Yeah, that's right. right. And, then they, got, and then, they, then they got Al Michaels to the truck. Yeah. Because Al Michaels was the voice of the Giants for that's eight right, years. Right. And so he knew the area, and he could tell you everything that was going on. You know, it's interesting, right. interesting about that. We had just, I just started camp yard. We had just started our all sports format two weeks before, so it was like perfect timing. We still had a news department, and we were the only station that was on the air. Uh, all the other stations were knocked off the air temporarily. Uh-huh. So we were on throughout, <laughs> and we were still there. Ralph Barbieri, Pat Olson, myself, and Gene Washington were at the stadium oh, until they kicked us out, but they made us leave. Well, yeah, the start by the time. And all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they just wanted to get out of there. We could have stayed there forever. <laughs> we wanted to. Bob Agnew was loving it. He went, ah, great. We're number one. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's listening to the radio. Everybody's yeah. listening to us. They're yeah. listening to us. Yeah. Here we go. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Bernie Glenn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, What's so good about it? <laughs> it's always good around here. All right, here's our third and final commercial break. Trivia question. Again, the theme is NCAA upset. Which Mid-American Conference member eliminated Duke in the 1996 tournament behind diminutive Point guard Earl Boykins. Got no oh, man. Clue. I have no. I, I mean, I. No I it's got to be some, some school like, like East, Eastern, Eastern Illinois Eastern or something. Michigan. Eastern, Eastern Michigan. Michigan. Good job. Okay. Well, yeah. Half comes for that because you had Eastern part. Correct. <laughs> Eastern Michigan. Okay. Now, Bruce, before we uh, cut the break, you were starting to talk about oh, Syracuse and what happened. Well, I just you know a couple weeks back uh, there was a bad call that went against Syracuse, and Jim Beheim was in a tight game. And I, you know, I always thought this guy was pretty composed. He went absolutely berserk, ran out of the court. I don't know what he said, but he got himself kicked out of the game. A technical was called, and they lost the game. And it just goes to show you that even the most composed, together, respected coaches can sometimes come unglued. You know, it's uh, that would be me. That might have yeah. been the beginning of the end for Syracuse because yeah. they they won every game. Yeah, and they I were mean, number one in the nation. Well, I think that's the thing that bothered him was that you know that here was a bad or potentially bad call that was ruining a potentially great season. So he just couldn't handle it. Well, all right, thank my uh, co-hosts here, Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan, for being in the studio again. Always a pleasure always talking a pleasure. with you. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Thoughts for the day. Martina Navratilova said, I'm not involved in a sport. I'm committed. Do you know the difference? Think of eggs and ham. The chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. There you go. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. And Wayne, she said that? She said that, yeah. Wow. And Wayne Gretzky said, a good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is. Is going, going to be. Oh, yes. Very smart. Very smart. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and giving away more free vacations for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, America. So long. I like that. <laughs>
So do people take advantage and go up to the um, lighthouse? Uh, 